Welcome, everybody. George Donnelly here today uh, with James Kramer. We're talking about simple ledger protocol technology on Bitcoin Cash. James, how are you doing today? Doing great. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. It's my pleasure. So to get us started, can you tell people a little bit about yourself, uh, your background uh, with respect to Bitcoin Cash? Uh, sure. So a little bit of personal background um, from Indiana, uh, surrounded by cornfields when I was growing up and uh, went to Purdue to study engineering, ended up getting a degree in civil engineering, um, went to work for a wastewater treatment uh, engineering firm or a couple different firms, I should say, did that for almost 10 years and then um, I was always passionate about software, even as a, a child, um, computers in general. And uh, in, in college, I started to teach myself Visual Basic and stuff. Uh, and then when I started my professional engineering career, career in civil engineering in 2009, I was uh, building a lot of software apps uh, during my career or during my job as a civil um, and mostly just like improving workflow efficiency in the engineering workflow, you know, the day-to-day -day stuff. Uh, I'm one of those lazy engineers that likes to automate things. So, um, that, you know, it just comes kind of naturally to, to use computers and, and want to be able to program them. Um, so my passion for software and computers, uh, basically drove me to quit my engineering job and start my own engineering firm or computer software firm in 2017. I think I started part-time in 2016, but I was full-time trying to do my own thing. 2017, I was going to build a uh, civil engineering software to try to make all civil engineers life better, you know, or easier. Mm -hmm. kind of cut out some of the mundane things. Um, so I joined up with a local guy here in Cleveland, uh, Jason Pribble, a brilliant marketing and graphics designer, and uh, just has a lot of different talents that I don't have. <clears throat> and um, he introduced me to one of his uh, friends who also uh, we, uh, you know, joined the company as a director and um, we were gonna make the civil engineering app um, and we were working through, you know, how to div divvy up the shares of our company. And, you know, I, I was the secretary of the company as well as the uh, president. And I, so I was gonna, you know, document how many shares each of us owned, you know, in an Excel spreadsheet because that's what everybody does. You know, mm -hmm. you, you, you record your company's stock shares in an Excel spreadsheet, basically, that's what everybody does. And um, I just thought that that was kind of odd when I when I learned about that. You know, um, I knew that we had this thing called Bitcoin and blockchain, and the Ethereum was coming around at that time or being more popular in the 2017 time. So I I wanted to try to use blockchain to um, figure out how to put our own company's share shares on a blockchain, document them so that it was an immutable record. There couldn't be any funny business, you know, in mm -hmm. the future, if the company ever became something, you want to have sort of that permanent record where there's no question on, on uh, the company's transaction history of ownership. Right. So that was basically what sparked a pivot for our company to get into blockchain and build start building simple ledger protocol now cool. we didn't do it yeah we didn't do it alone um you know i was a btc fan in 2017 mm -hmm. i thought bitcoin cash was a scam and um it wasn't until i sh tried to start using btc in uh, january 2018 when i realized that it's like unusable so I tried to use Ethereum, but it was kind of complicated. Mm -hmm. And somehow I wound up messing with Bitcoin Cash. And 
I met John Old Fookball and we worked on a couple, um, we built this betting app called ChainBet early in 2018 that, uh, or no, it was mid 2018. And um, so I think just having the opportunity to meet Joan Old allowed Simple Ledger Protocol to actually become something because he's sort of like this force of nature. He, Joan Old was the one that found Mark Lunderberg. Uh, Lunderberg was sort of the chief designer of SLP as far as how it works. Mm-hmm. Um, he knew what a DAG was. I didn't know what a DAG was, you know, direct acyclic graph. I had never heard of such a thing. And uh, so he showed us how to do it. And um, and apparently that was colored coins at the time. You know, I, I'm just trying to build some kind of ledger system that's immutable mm-hmm. and, you know, to do a company stock share thing or whatever. And, and these guys are thinking about colored coins you know, colored right. coins had been a conversation since like 2013 or 14, maybe earlier, about how to do colored coins on blockchain, which I was never even, in, I didn't get involved in Bitcoin until 2017. So I didn't really know much about that stuff. Mm-hmm. So those guys sort of, um, you know, I came up with the name Simple Ledger Protocol in early 2018. And I had my own little design that was based on like addresses. You know, you just have this address and the address would be the ledger, you know, and then you would just Mm -hmm. send messages to that address and you could sort of uh, enumerate all the messages and kind of come up with the current state of the ledger. That was a bad design. It was a terrible design because none of the none of the um, full nodes index for uh, address, you know. Most of them, mm-hmm. they have they have TXID indexes, but they don't have an address index. I didn't know that at the time. I didn't know it was such a poor design. And um, also, it wasn't compatible with light wallets, really. So mm-hmm. those guys came up with a way to do it with an SPV wallet, which was really the only reason SLP ever became successful is because you didn't need a server that understood what SLP was. Basically... Um, because, um, because it's light wallet compatible, we were able to just build the first SLP validator in the wallet itself. And that's all you needed. You don't need any servers. You just needed, you know, Electrum server. That's a general purpose thing, right? It doesn't know anything about SLP. Mm -hmm. It, It took, it took us up to this point where we were able to sort of build servers that index SLP efficiently. And so if somebody wants to use a server instead of having to build it into your own wallet, you can do that now, which makes things easier. But um, if we had to have done that from the beginning, I don't think it would have been successful because it takes so long to sort of build a robust infrastructure, you know, a server infrastructure. Mm-hmm. So SLP, simple, simple ledger protocol, and, you know, for uh, for the end user, you know, for the person who's not uh, t- that technologically savvy, what's the benefit? What can they do with it now? Right. It was born of just this idea of stock shares. But what, what what's possible to do with it today? I mean, the the number of applications is there's a huge number of applications. Um, probably my favorite application was which is yet to um, be realized is just a way for private businesses to interoperate with each other and keep tabs sort of with with each other Um, you know everybody uh, business is supposed to have an accounting system your books Um, Mm -hmm. if if everybody's private business could have an interoperable interface with each other's books then I think, you know, sending an invoice to somebody with SLP could significantly, you know, uh, improve the workflow of like how you create it, you know, how you create an invoice and enter it into your booking system and all that kind of stuff. So really my, my vision for SLP and into the future is just to, um, is to focus sort of on that as, uh, allowing private businesses to interoperate with each other, you know, while maintaining 
privacy on your on your business operations. So um, with this, the, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say there's a lot of other applications, you know, like event ticketing, you know, with NFTs or not with NF. You could do it with just fungible tokens. Although there could be some legal issues with the fungibility, um, but I think event ticketing is a really exciting application because you could have your event issuers issue uh, seats or whatever for the event at one price and then you could have secondary markets that try to resell those tickets to broader audiences and you could have a smart contract actually that gives a kickback percentage back to the original event ticket issuer. Uh, that was Andrew Stone's idea, or I, I heard him talking about that a few weeks ago. I thought that was a pretty exciting idea. Yeah, actually, uh, I I interviewed uh, Andrew Stone, yeah, two to three weeks ago, and uh, I put some clips uh, from it into the the documentary. So, oh, yeah, that's he... that's where I saw that. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool, cool. So. Um... There's been an explosion, really, of SLP projects, you know, like Spice Token, Honk, Refund, are new. Uh, do you do you follow that ecosystem at all? Do you have any thoughts on where how that's going or, or where mm -hmm. that might be headed? Yeah, I think those are all uh, fun projects that have really they, those projects have allowed SLP to become a secure protocol, right? Like without Honk and Spice creating so much volume, we would not have had the opportunity to sort of find a lot of the bugs that existed that we didn't know about. Um, as far as, um, you know, those projects, their viability, I don't know uh, what the future holds for those types of things. Um, they may not make sense. You know, if it's a loyalty point type of thing, that, that's fine, but you know, again, the fungibility uh, is becomes an issue um, from a legal standpoint, um, and I think people like to ignore that issue. But um, you know, we I don't like to promote scams or anything, so um, I don't really promote a lot of projects. I just sort of keep my head down and focus on these sort of business applications that I'm interested in. Obviously, um, you know, anybody can use SLP and you can't really stop them from doing that. So, um, I, you know, I don't know what more to say about that. Sure. Have you seen that? Uh, are you familiar with cctip.io? Yeah, I think somebody has tried to tip me on Twitter with that a couple of days ago. Yeah, so it's a tipping service like Chain Tip, but now uh, they also have liquidity for a bunch of different tokens, including SLP tokens. Um, so it's actually an exchange now of sorts, and that's I think that's been quite um, exciting for a lot of SLP token uh, uh, builders. But what do you what do you think the SLP token ecosystem needs, uh, say over the next year or five years? Yeah, no, I think the biggest thing is just like a browser extension wallet. I've heard this over and over again, and that's what we tried to do with the browser, uh, sorry, Badger wallet. Um, actually, uh, Drew um, and I started uh, Badger wallet. Uh, well, that was like end of 2018 or so. And then um, he, I guess, stopped working on it. So um, I think Vin Armani now runs Badger Wallet or whatever. So, um, but uh, it sort of has fallen short uh, as in, in sort of what people want to have in a browser extension. People want to be able to interoperate with smart contracts and have that functionality. And um, the the problem with Badger was just the infrastructure at the time was was bad. It's just too early, you know. So now that we have uh, a solid sort of infrastructure foundation, I think it's the perfect time to, to start that again. Just build a new browser extension from scratch using the new infrastructure. And um, I think it'll go a lot better this time. 
Yeah, I was talking on uh, Reddit with someone who said, I forget their username, but they said they were involved in uh, in Badger and that basically they just ported the whole thing over from MetaMask and their opinion was it just needs to be reported over from MetaMask because MetaMask did a huge uh, update. Mm -hmm. does, that, does that fit with, but, your, with your thinking or? Yeah, I mean, the original Badger was, uh, we took we took MetaMask, forked it, and then made some pretty big changes to it. Uh, you know, the current MetaMask, I think, has a new licensing, so that would have to be looked at. Um, honestly, I'd rather just start from scratch um, because Bitcoin and Ethereum are two different things. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily, I think, you know, Bitcoin is simple enough that it can be started from scratch, I think, you know. Um, there's going to be if you fork the new MetaMask, there's just so much stuff in there that you're not going to use because it's not Ethereum. So, um, yeah, I think just starting from scratch. How far away do you see that that restart from scratch uh, until that happens good, or, or what needs to happen before that can happen? I think um, there's definitely been talk about it from a couple different groups. Um, you know, I think um, SLP Foundation wants to possibly do something in that space, but um, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not uh, I'm not planning on building a browser extension personally right now. Um, mm -hmm. But if somebody else is looking for somebody to help out with that effort, uh, I'd certainly be available to uh, assist. Cool. Yeah. And I, I told the, this person that I was chatting with that, you know, if they wanted to, to work on it as well, I would help them, uh, you know, prepare a flip start or whatnot and get funding. So, you know, but that, I haven't heard back from that person in a while. So, you know, sounds like there's two offers of help here for somebody who wants to do that work. Yeah, you know? no, I, I do. I'm, I'm fairly confident that it's being sort of designed in the background and it's just not to the implementation phase yet. Um, mm -hmm. you just want a lot of, um, you know, a lot of thought needs to go into it, especially from like, a, if you want it to be able to work with smart contracts and stuff, I think that all needs to be designed out. That'll be like a phase on its own, I think. Okay, cool. So in the SLP space, there is, uh, the SLP foundation, right? And then there's SLP, the company, right? Is well, that... there's no SLP company. Uh, there's Simple Ledger Inc., which is okay. uh, the company that I'm president of. And then there's SLP Foundation, which is uh, Peter Ng. Uh, he started with a couple other guys, I think. And um, so SLP Foundation is a, is a um, non-for-profit. And um, it was important... I'm glad they did this because, you know, I just care about making money. You know, I, I want to uh, exploit SLP so that I can make a profit with my company. Mm -hmm. And um, so, but there's this open source ecosystem that needs all kinds of help and people want to, um, you know, it's, it's an open source thing. So it doesn't, that doesn't necessarily belong. It shouldn't belong to a private company. It needs to belong to a, non for profit type of deal. So my job is to try to make as much money as I can. And SLP Foundation's job is to make sure SLP as a protocol is successful into the future. Cool. So uh, getting back to uh, Andrew Stone, uh, are you familiar with his group tokenization proposal? Mm hmm. Yep. And so what yeah, I was you... a big, I was a huge fan of uh, op group um, when it was first proposed, uh, especially because that, if it was going to be accepted, that was going to mean I didn't have to build SLP. <laughs> um, but once op group was rejected, we were just like, okay, we're, we have to do SLP now because there's, you know, we're not going to get this op group thing. Um, and now I know that it's a pretty controversial topic. Maybe I'm not, I'm not sure how controversial it is now, but um, some people think that it would, it's probably not going to 
happen uh, because it's a lot of changes on the consensus layer that compromises the cash utility of Bitcoin cash. Mm. So you're you're not in favor of it anymore, or you you still think I, about I, it, or yeah, I think I think Op Group uh, would present a massive risk for the vision of Bitcoin cash. Um, you're changing Bitcoin at a pretty fundamental way in, in, and I could be wrong. You know, I, I don't, I don't know the internals of how op group works enough to say that definitively, but you know, my gut feels that it, it's such a complex change on the full node level. And I mean, even minor changes can result in um, problems with the network. So when you're talking about something as invasive as op group, it seems like it's going to be hugely controversial. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, so SLP Foundation is kind of working on stuff to support builders, you know, open source stuff, whereas Simple Ledger Incorporated your company is more interested on in kind of exploiting building things for profit, which, you know, it's great to have yeah. approaches, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but so what, what things in 2020 and 2021 is simple ledger incorporated uh, focused on building. So um, I don't want to get into too many details of our private roadmap, but um, the one thing that I'm super excited about, and you can get sort of a sneak peek if you want. You can go to tokenauth.io. So tokenauth.io, and it's there's a lot of like the um, boilerplate text there. So if you see some mistakes, don't be surprised. It's really just a placeholder for now. We haven't done any announcements or anything, but mm -hmm. um, it's an authentication system using NFTs that will allow you to authenticate uh, anything really. It's like authentication as a service using NFT tokens. Uh, so if you were familiar with the sort of traditional authentication as a service, kind of like zero auth or no, it's called auth zero, a U T H zero.com. It might be dot IO. Yeah. It doesn't ring um, a bell actually. Okay. So it's an authentication as a service but that's just using traditional authentication tokens. Um, so this would actually use uh, NFTs for authentication. So you can authenticate into any electronic or physical resource uh, using an NFT token. Mm -hmm. And it, it would prove uh, basically the technology uh, gives you access to something by proving that you are holding the token itself, the physical token, and not just the private key. You know, the, the sort of naive approach to implementing such a system would be, okay, you just have to sign a message that you have a private key, and that's your proof that you hold this token. Well, you could just share that private key with a whole bunch of people, and well, that just blows the whole system up, right? Mm -hmm. So. In this technology, we actually uh, prove that you're holding the token and not just the private key. And if it's an NFT, there's only one token. Um, so that's that's what I'm focused mostly on this year and um, maybe next year too. But I mean, there's just a whole bunch of stuff going on in the background, a lot of noise. Um, we have a lot of people that are interested in SLP and it's, it becomes, um, I don't want to say overwhelming, but uh, it's hard to filter, you know, who has um, genuine intentions of, in intentions of interest and who is trying to generate noise. Mm -hmm. And so I actually, I sort of pride myself in the ability to cut through the noise and uh, stay focused and continue on building and if somebody doesn't have money that they're going to give you or pay to for your services, then you really shouldn't spend much time, um, you know, entertaining some project. I mean, that's sort of the 
that's kind of how you can cut through the noise, right? If somebody is willing to pay for your services, then, uh, you know, that might be a good signal. Yeah. Yeah. The moment where you're like, okay, that's, that's a nice conversation. Uh, you know, right. if you want to get started, uh, we'll need X percent up front. Here's the bill. <laughs> yep. You got it. <laughs> so, um, let's see, I forgot my question, but, um, oh yeah. So the applications for what you're building would be, you know, among other things like medical records. Would it, would it be related? To yeah. That? So the, the medical records thing is actually really cool and exciting. It was my wife's idea. Um, we went to Florida last year <clears throat> with her parents and we had, we got a chance to get away from the kids for a day. We went on a little date and ended up talking about, you know, half of it was about Bitcoin and half of it was about, you know, things that she's doing with her life or her career. And um, she was, she talked about medical records and how it's a big problem. And then, and I sort of parsed out the core of the issue. And I, I've ha I had this token auth idea before, but I'm like, you know, token auth would work perfectly for what you're talking about with medical records. So basically you can give your doctor the privileges through an NFT token to sign into where you keep all your medical records. Mm -hmm. And so he, your doctor would have access to your, your folder that has your medical records. And you could take that token away from him at any time because you're the token group owner, right? You just have that authority, whether it's using a multi-sig or whatever kind of smart contract. And um, now you can't stop him from copying all your medical records that he had access to, right? There's no, you can't solve that problem, but you can prevent him from having future medical records. Mm -hmm. So it, it does give you the ability to control your data um, from sort of a, a future point of view. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm, I recently had uh, went to actually, actually it was for my cat. <laughs> I took the cat to a new veterinarian and they had to redo everything because I don't know. I'm no good with storing paperwork. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, maybe. it's a it's a challenging problem, and filling out uh, forms is annoying. So, oh, super annoying. Yeah, <laughs> somebody so, needs to come up with an interoperable, uh, or just I guess a standard, you know, of mm -hmm. of that of that initial visit form. Hmm. That's interesting. So um, how do you feel, you know, getting to, you know, touching on Bitcoin Cash uh, for a moment, how do you feel about Bitcoin Cash's direction in 2021? You know, after the, um, the hard fork with ABC, uh, I've never been so proud to be part of this community. Um, the, the precedent that was set when the tax, the eight percent tax that was proposed was it was rejected. That pre precedent sets us up for the future, so we're not going to have that conflict anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and just the number of people who stood up and fought against that was super surprising to me. Like I didn't have to do any fighting. I just totally stayed out of the conversation. I mean, I I chatted with some folks behind the scenes and I expressed my opinions. Initially, I was like, you know, I should probably just stay on both sides of this. You know, I don't want to burn any bridges, but it got to a point where it's like, you know, this is like war. You know, we can't be we're, I'm sorry, we can't be friends. Like if that's like this is Bitcoin Cash, we have principles. We're not going to sell it out. We're not going to sell Bitcoin out to some thing. Mm. So um yeah, it, it was just very, uh, it was a, it was a great moment for Bitcoin to, um, to be able to survive that fork. I was a little bit pessimistic, but, um, the community was just so strong. I couldn't believe it. There was a lot of uncertainty right up to even to the first few days of November. I think around the first week of November, it became really clear that mm -hmm. it was, you know, definitely going to be an inconsequential fork. Mm -hmm. Really, yeah. I 
I think the AB, team ABC just shot themselves in the foot. It's complete foolishness. Um, yeah, I mean, um, I don't, you, you know, there's like, you never know what's going on behind the scenes and what the true story is. Like the public story is always apparent, but there could be other um, factors at play that we just don't know about. And um, so that's why I try to stay out of it is because I don't, you only know what you see on Twitter and, you know, is that true? You know, um, hmm. I'm just glad that I didn't have to get involved with it, involved with it. <laughs> and I'm glad that we don't have to pay a tax or the miners don't have to pay a tax every block. Um, we can just stay true to the vision of what Bitcoin is. Hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, there could have been a way to handle it so much better. Um, but yeah, definitely. I, I don't think it ever made sense to try and force it down everybody's throat. You know, I think maybe I, from my point of view, I thought maybe there, there could have been some, some value there, but you know, if everybody's against it, then there's, you know, there's no sense. There was no sense in pushing it. So going forward, you know, now that we're in a new year, uh, markets are, uh, you know, have been quite positive for Bitcoin cash over the last couple of weeks. Uh, what do you think that we need, uh, to do Bitcoin cash, uh, in 2021 to really, um, up our game, to achieve goals, to move forward, to realize the vision. Hmm. That's a good question. I think, um, Un uh, I want to say unity, but uh, sometimes that's, uh, it's really just hard to say. I think if we can just continue to have everybody keep doing what they're doing, everybody needs to keep their heads down, working hard, uh, making sure that every, um, that we're keeping on schedule as far as our internal goals or our public goals, um, and keep spreading the word about what Bitcoin cash is and why. Um, I think, especially now that we've had this coronavirus and um, I mean, what's happening with the Bitcoin price, you're gonna have a whole new wave of people who are interested in Bitcoin now. So we just need to keep repeating what we've been doing. I think that it works. We just don't, we just can't give up. We just have to keep doing it. Um, it's been effective so far. And um, the only thing that's going to stop us is if, you know, if somebody shuts down the internet. Hmm. Yeah. Which, you know, becomes an open question now. I mean, did you see what happened with uh, Parler? I did. I was, um, I got on Parler just because everybody was talking about it. Um, I saw a lot of things on Parler that, you know, who knows if they are true. Um, I believe in the justice system, or I, I don't, I have faith that our justice system um, would, um, would uh, make sure that if there's anything that's going on, uh, like the things they talk about on parlor that it, it would be handled, but, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, we're in a very interesting times to be living. And, um, mm. I think we're seeing sort of an evolution of the internet. Um, maybe we're going to have two sort of internets come out of this whole thing. I don't know. Uh, you're going to have us maybe a censored version of the internet and, uh, decentralized blockchain based internet. I'm not that's sure. That's very possible. Yeah. And there's also the, the whole element of China. China seems to be going their own way more than ever, you know? Um, well, mm -hmm. yeah, they're good. The China is a world superpower and they, um, they're going their own way. And I'm not sure if we're going our own way or not. It's, not very apparent yet on um, what's going on um, with politics. You know, I 
just like the BCH fork, I tried to stay out of that. And I also try to stay out of our American fork that seems like we might be having right now. <laughs> um, it is, it's kind of stressful though. You know, we don't know how many presidents we might have on the January 20th or 21st. <laughs> uh, it, you're going to have uh, reports that there's that Donald Trump is still the president probably. And then the mainstream media is just going to say that's all fake lies. And it could be, you know, but who knows, maybe, maybe it's not, maybe there are two governments operating simultaneously. How do you know that? What a mess. What a mess. It is quite the mess. We need the decentralized world of Bitcoin Cash now more than ever, I think. Yeah, I think just self-sovereignty. Everybody needs to start taking responsibility for them for their own actions Mm. and um, not allowing. um, uh, I don't know. It's really um, it's really a strange time because. People are confused. They don't know what to believe. Mm. The first casualty in war is truth. Mm. And so I think it's safe to say we're at war. And um, most people don't know that we're at war. We're, we're, at, we're in a civil war and we're in a sort of a global war with uh, other countries probably. And uh, all we want to do as uh, citizens is to be able to have our own businesses make money, have a happy life. That's all we want. We just want to do commerce with each other. Trade. And it, seem, yeah. it's, it seems like we're not allowed to trade or buy or sell without somebody's permission. Mm-hmm. And it's becoming very, um, I think everybody's becoming very weary of that. And, um, you know, I just pray. I am a man of faith. Um, i I pray to God and uh, I believe in Jesus Christ and um, I hope that uh, I hope we can all get through this without too much mess. Yeah, me too. I hope that as well. Absolutely. And what you know what you said about we have to put um, you know, we have to focus on taking care of ourselves. That's so important. So many people are always looking for a leader out there, someone to follow. Mm -hmm. People right. Who, we all need to be our own leaders, you know, to a greater extent now, I think. Absolutely. So, um, I James, think, I think, oh yeah, go ahead. I, go ahead. I think maybe what we've, what we found and sort of what I've learned out of all of this is that, you know, society as a whole, you know, may have some, I mean, maybe it's obvious that there's some exploits there, uh, some security vulnerabilities in, in our social fabric that um i'm not i'm not quite sure um you know how things are going to end up uh hopefully blockchain uh can help in that i think so all right well uh james kramer of simple ledger inc uh thanks so much for the interview today it's been really interesting do you want to get in any final words let people know where they can find you uh, I guess the only uh, final thing that I wanted to say is um, I just want to say thanks to all the other people working on SLP because it's not just me. Um, I'm just going to name one person. Um, I already named two earlier, but uh, JT Freeman, uh, he has been a vital role in getting SLP to where it is today. Uh, So I just want to give a big shout out to him. I'm leaving out other people, but um, I just want to give a special shout out to him because, uh, because it's been a great uh, year and a half or two years and um, I'm looking forward to the next several years. So that's all I've got. If you, if people want to uh, follow me, I'm on Twitter still uh, James underscore Kramer. Excellent. Okay. And well, then if, if you want to learn about SLP, oh, sorry. Um, if you want to learn about SLP, uh, slp.cash is the website. Cool. Cool. And we definitely need more builders on SLP. And, you know, uh, there are hackathons going on all the time. So lots of opportunities. There's James. a hackathon right now, right? Uh, Coin yeah. Party. 
Coinparty.org. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. It'll go, I think it'll go through the 20th. So it has about nine days to go. Very cool. All right. Well, thanks for having me on, George. It's my pleasure, James. Thank you so much. And uh, let's welcome. keep building Bitcoin Cash. Absolutely. Take care.